movement called Project Green Hands by doing this with rural people in South India. I made people sit down and made them breathe and said, see, what you inhale, the trees are exhaling. What you exhale, the trees are inhaling. One half of your lungs are hanging out there. Yes? One half of your breathing apparatus are hanging out there. With this, we started a movement called Project Green Hands, which is still going on great. Twenty-seven million trees they've planted till now. Tamil Nadu's green cover has gone up by 7.2 percent officially. As per the Google Maps, it's gone up over 11 percent. All this because people became conscious that yes, what I exhale, the trees inhaling. Not just intellectually, we made them sit there and breathe. Just see, it's happening all the time. If you become conscious, you know the nature of your existence. Once you know the nature of your existence, and only when you know the nature of your existence, can you handle this life properly. To put it very simply, let's say your phone, because one billion phones, uh, the minister was saying, that means almost there is nobody except infants, almost there is nobody who doesn't have a phone in the country <laughs> So, the more you know about it, the better you can use it, is it so? Hello? Yeah. The more you know about it, the better you can use it. So why do you think that is not true with this one? The more you know about this, the better you can use it. When we said self-realization, we were not talking about some heavenly nonsense. We only talked about if you know this entirely, you can use this in incredible ways, in ways that you've never thought it possible. Especially if you believe that you are going to generate content for the world, you are going to influence people, I beg you, you must be conscious to whatever extent you can. That's a responsibility you must fulfill. I think it's time. We should. I think it's time. Then. Yeah, I, I, I think on that note. Uh, it's lost. Lost? Yeah. Shall we? Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we would like to, because I'm, I'm sure this. Uh, they are not questions and nobody wants to leave Sadhguru. Oh. <laughs> but uh, we Hello. have to carry on, yes. So uh, I, I would uh, now request everyone to uh, please pay our respects and give a huge round of applause to Sadhguru. Thank you. Thank Request your attendance for the FIKI KPMG report that is about to be presented by Mr. Varun Gupta. Uh, he's partner with KPMG India. However, those who may want to have lunch may proceed. And uh, the next session post lunch is going to start at 2.30. Thank you. He's not doing very well. The Indian economy grew at roughly about 7.3%. Um, and, and the world economy really struggled to grow uh, from 2.4 to 2.6 percent last year. Uh, the impact of that was that the media and entertainment sector in India actually did very well. It uh, grew at roughly about 12.8 percent, which would make it one of the largest, fastest growing uh, media and entertainment sectors anywhere in the world. Um, we effectively grew from roughly about 1,026 billion rupees to uh, 1157 billion rupees in 2015. Um, the bright spots were really uh, digital, which outpaced even our estimates for last year. Um, television, which did very well on the back of certain trends. Uh, and radio, which came off a fairly low base and, and the, the uh, phase one or phase three auctions that got concluded. Um, and that's what primarily drove drove the growth in these segments. Films and print struggled for different reasons. Um, uh, print ha is more of a sectoral issue. Uh, films had, had a less attractive year with a lesser amount of uh, hits being delivered and the screen density remaining to be a continuing problem in the country. 
advertising did fairly well, um, grew almost 15% over 2014. Um, sports did very, very well um, again last year, and it's, it's an area that continues to become more and more attractive. Uh, two state elections um, and the e-commerce dividend, as we call it, was also very, very useful. Um, uh, a lot of spending on e-commerce, uh, uh, from e-commerce companies on, especially on television and print, boosted uh, overall growth in the sector. Um, and uh, auto and telecom saw renewed growth uh, in, in advertising spend as confidence came back into the economy. And it's a trend that we expect to continue. Moving on, uh, talking about you know, some of the key agents that, that are going to drive growth in the next, uh, next five years in the Indian economy, um, there will be areas in content, mobility, analytics, and infrastructure, which is expected to drive growth for the industry. Um, content, I think generally everyone un agrees that it's, it's going to change significantly how content is consumed in the country and how it's monetized. We've just seen the start of it. We've heard a lot of people talk about how that's changing. Um, the app economy will have as much of an impact on uh, media and entertainment and digital consumption as you're seeing in other parts of the economy. And increasingly, the, the app phenomenon will effectively transition from multiple screens to effectively the way the content is consumed. Um, f the, the two key initiatives which will also drive consumption growth, one is the rollout of 4G in the country and uh, the government initiative around uh, digitizing India and putting fiber down, and e-commerce e and payment models which will effectively um, evolve to make payment and micro-consumption of content easier. Moving on to the sectors, um, television grew, television advertising grew roughly about 17% over last year. Um, E-commerce and sports properties were the main reason why it propelled uh, forward higher than we'd expected. Uh, the market size uh, for advertising in 2015 was roughly about 542 billion and is expected to double in the next five years. Um, there are ch uh, challenges in the industry, as we are aware, uh, primarily on account of the business models that are currently prevalent in cable and, uh, uh, and to a lesser extent in DTH. Um, phase three continues to be a challenge. We haven't been able to get to where we needed to, and everyone's waiting to watch how phase four evolves. Um, Rio hasn't come in, so uh, fixed fee deals are still uh, the norm in terms of how content costs are being negotiated. Um, in terms of um, um, the uh, one of the key changes in the television ecosystem that happened was the introduction of Bark, which resulted in um, several FTA channels moving into the top ten rankings um, and Free Dish becoming more and more relevant. And this year is the first year we saw OTT move from the fringes into the mainstream. It's a, it's a phenomenon we expected to see quite significantly going forward as well. Oops. Uh, print, um, you know, it, it um, continues to be, India continues to be one of the few global markets where print is continuing to, gr to grow. In a lot of developed and emerge, emerging economies, print is actually declining as we speak. Uh, India, the print story is largely driven by um, uh, regional and Hindi. Uh, English print has already seen a significant slowdown in terms of its growth. Um, advertising slew, uh, um, slowed down over last year from roughly about 8% to 7%, and that's a trend that's likely to continue. But uh, print publishers have uh, uh, increased cover prices in certain uh, instances to actually mitigate some of the slowdown. But structurally, it's an industry that will continue to see challenges from, from digital, as we're all aware. Um, the, the broad split English uh, was roughly about 5%, Hindi was roughly about 10%, and other regional was about 9%. The film industry grew by 9.3%, and um, Hollywood and regional were the key drivers of growth. Uh, Hindi remained relatively flat over last year. Um, 
and, and one of the, the, the key challenges that remains in the film industry for it to grow is screen density and the ability to put up new screens and the associated infrastructure with it. And that continues to be a major challenge for us. Um, radio effectively came into its own as a reach platform and was heavily used, especially by the e-commerce players um, in 2015. Um, FDI limits were improved from 26 to 49 percent, um, and stage one of phase three auctions was completed. However, the um, challenge remains on the smaller cities and the reserve prices that were put up for auctions. And in, in phase one, effectively, what that meant was, or phase three, what meant was some of the smaller cities went unsold. Um, when the next round of bidding happens, we'll have to see how the government effectively rationalizes this and how this moves forward. Having said that, given that it's of such a low base, this industry is expected to grow at roughly about 17% over 15 to 2020, and we expect this to be a, a, a high growth industry in relative terms in India, and again, that's an anomaly compared to the rest of the world. Um, Currently, India is roughly at about 0.6% of the global digital ad spend um, uh, and uh, grew at just under 40% in 2015, surpassing um, e uh, even our expectations as of last year. Um, there's continued allocation of spend, not just of e-commerce players, but of industry as the eyeballs move to digital. Um, mobile ad spend was roughly at about uh, 9 billion rupees as of last year. and video advertising grew to um, a significant category of roughly about 1,200 uh, crores or 12 billion uh, rupees in 2015, and is expected to grow at roughly about 40% year on year. Um, in, in terms of traffic, uh, video and audio um, came into its own um, and probably a little bit ahead of the infrastructure in the country. Um, we don't have high-speed bandwidth as easily available as the rest of the world, uh, and followed by social networking and communication. Um, we expect that there'll be significant investment in OTT platforms in the next, uh, uh, next five years, and more and more consumption of content will move to OTT and the second screen as we move forward. Um, just to wrap up very quickly, um, you know, 2015 was a good year overall for the industry. Uh, we moved from roughly about 1150 crores, um, we, we expect to go from 1150 crores to roughly about 2200 crores, uh, 2200 billion, sorry, um, um, in, in the next five years, that's a growth of about 14.3%. Uh, and advertising revenues over that period are expected to double roughly from 475 billion to 994 billion rupees. Um, uh, and, and that should mean there should be a lot more investment and, and new innovation in this, this industry in India. Thank you very much. as you feel like, Mr. Puri. I think that uh, as we've all seen and the numbers have been floating around, so many million mobile phones, so many million uh, smartphones and internet connections and so forth. So the numbers are, are just humongous in favor of, of the digital tsunami which is happening. The audiences, obviously, everybody can anecdotally see and see in the figures are shifting to consuming media from digitally in some device or the other. So there's no choice really for media organizations not to move in the direction where their audiences are moving. And you have a situation where you can't afford not to be in it, and sometimes you can't afford to be in it because it's an expensive exercise. Because mo the monetization models are Everybody's trying their own tricks. Some are, you know, with, in our case, in news, the, uh, not that we're doing it, but paywalls, metering walls, freemiums, uh, and then, of course, there's the advertising model uh, where a lot of the video content is being consumed. Um, but the future is there, as everybody has seen. In, in our case, we have uh, what we are lucky that we are in all three mediums in the sense that uh, we have video or 24 hour news channels. Uh, we have print in terms of a magazine and also a newspaper. And we also have digital in terms of the, our own website. Uh, so we have worked in a way that, uh, that we have tried to integrate all these three elements. All they all have different platforms, different brands. Uh, we've tried to 
integrate them into the digital side of it so that the video comes to the, the website seamlessly, uh, so does the print uh, come into uh, the website. And journalists are made to think digitally. We're not fully succeeded. We're not reached a level where digital first that they file in digital first and then think about their platforms. So that's a, a, a bit way to go. But I think that the fundamentals still remain the same. I've always believed that you produce great content, the rest of the equation will balance. And it's, I think that fundamental is still there. Produce exclusive content, produce content which nobody else has, and people will come to you. You cannot do commodity stuff. You cannot do the how, where, what. Actually, people want to know in print especially why opinions of why it happened and not the basic information. So I think that's, that's the way forward in terms of, of producing premium content, distribution, all that will take care of itself. Thanks, Mr. Puri. You know, I'll come back to you because one of the thoughts and perhaps uh, some of the other panelists can also address this is that premium content, but who's going to pay for it? Are people ready to pay for that or not? I think that's a question which is, which is going to evolve. Um, Arthur, if I can come to you at, at uh, Discovery. Uh, again, you're, you've been a legacy player for many decades. Um, what is Discovery doing to keep itself relevant? There's a mic, yeah. Well, you know, I, I think that the reality is, is that um, everyone is still figuring out a way and um, so when, when we look at, at, at digital, fundamentally, I see two different things. You know, I see um, an ecosystem around our core business where, you know, I think we can no longer say we're just about channels. We have to have everything that goes with it. We have to have a VOD service, a catch-up service, an app, etc. So if you will, the ecosystem is changing around our core business. And um, the accountants, you know, the finance people, you know, in our organization will try and sort of nail you down and say, okay, on a product by product basis, this is making money, this is not making money. So if it's not making money, you can't do it. Or you have to have a, a business plan behind it. You know, I look at it as an ecosystem. And I think, you know, that, that you know, I think is, is one reality we have. Then we have digital opportunities that are business opportunities. You know, and I think those kinds of things are um, unique and different and have business plans. And, you know, those are things that we're looking at as well. So, you know, I think for us, a challenge, I think, a reality is on the one hand, we have to transform our core business. And that is a huge uh, challenge in terms of culture, mindset, skills and capabilities. And it also requires us to break very established organizational barriers that have tra traditionally existed between programming, marketing, you know, sales, you know, et cetera. You know, I think that is one set of challenges. And then I think the new business models, you know, sort of the genuine investments in standalone digital businesses, you know, that I think is, is a different thing uh, than that sits outside of our current organization. Thanks, um, Arthur. Uh, so don't you, to, to uh, share, uh, to ask you about what, um, is the sense you're getting from your consumers. You are now directly in touch and you know who is consuming what and what they like, what they don't like. What are the patterns you're noticing from the consumption of the content that you offer? No, I think, uh, um, incidentally, we've just launched our OTT yesterday, Boot, so the timing uh, couldn't have been. But I, to just tell you, as we put it onto the two sites, within a couple of hours, you had 50,000 people who, were, who had downloaded it and so on and so forth. Um, so I think that therefore the number of people using these things and getting interested in new things is very high when we've not even advertised, to be honest, They're just, just the digital piece. But just I to think clarify, one this, is, this, is the, this is this OTT is free, right? I can download it and consume without paying you. Am I right? Yeah, so, but I'll tell you this question which we keep coming to that, you know, consumer is not paying. Consumer is indeed paying. Consumer may not be paying me for the content. But with the current data cost, if the consumer is streaming my content, the consumer is paying for data cost in the data pack which they have. So this concept that consumer is not paying is not entirely correct, uh, let me be honest with you. And I think the thing is that at this moment, because the way we are organized, the, in the, 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 the data costs are basically being charged by the telcos because that's the payment mechanism which exists. As the payment ecosystem develops, when you are able to, when more and more people would have wallets and you can access those wallets directly as content owners, 
And when data costs come down at the other hand, or, or all the services are bundled by the, by the operators, I think our ability to charge for content will automatically go up, provided you have premium content. So this, I think this, if you have premium content, if you have content which is liked, see there is no room for middling any longer, forget even losers. That is a hot reality of digital. I think you need to have something which is, which is if it's working, it's working. I think that's the key thing, and that's, that's, that's a new reality. You've got to make that work. Coming to your specific question, I think the advantage from a content point of view is you now know exactly what people are doing, and you now exactly know what they are viewing, how they are viewing, what reactions are. You're not going by a sample database, which is what we used to analyze on but through, you, through our measurement systems. You're now going with actual users, and you know exactly what is happening as to what is the viewing pattern, what, what points are working better, what are not working better. And that in some ways is a very enriching experience. And all of us have talked about a Netflix example. I don't repeat that, but I think there is more and more which is, which, which is going to come as we go forward. Yeah, that's, that's the key point from my end. Thanks. Um, uh, so that, you know, at one point when we were growing up, um, 70 mm was a big thing, right? You have a 70 mm screen and you can see the biggest uh, your, your cinema fans uh, could, could see their heroes and uh, others on the large screen, but the screen is getting smaller. Um, where do you see this trend? How would a Disney uh, plan to reach to its consumers? Do you still, are you still banking on the big screens? Are you looking at the mobile screen? Is the mobile screen good enough even for watching a movie? I'm not so sure, but where, does that, where is that headed? So Pranjal, you know, as with most things in India, the cup half full comes from the volumes, right? So there are more than 200 million smartphones in use today. Uh, more than 85 million people are watching 3G and 4G and, and, uh, and have access to that. That 200 million is more than all the film screens and TV screens put together. You've got uh, 250 million people who are online. Uh, you, you're the largest film producing nation in the world, you've got the second largest print circulation in the world, you're the third largest TV audience in the world, and that's great, that's a cup half full. Having said that, your consumers are paying $3 per month for TV. Uh, your content today in the digital medium is following an advertiser model and therefore, despite the fact that yes, we are paying for data charges, the consumer in many ways doesn't really consider that they're paying for content. Um, we are in a subsidized economy in many ways when it comes to the way that we're approaching our consumers on the digital medium. And that's because the ubiquity of that content and the ease of distribution is so high that we've all jumped onto the bandwagon and said, let's just get more users on board, which is great. The belief is that that would be habit forming. People will therefore consume much more content on digital. That will finally lead them to pay, right? But I think if you just relate it, and it's a very simplistic example, but suppose you set up film theaters across the country and you showed those movies for free. You had cricket matches in stadiums and you allowed people to come in completely for free. Uh, you just launched 500 television channels and you didn't really charge anyone for it. And you based the entire model on advertisers coming on board to be able to subsidize the fact that you were not charging the consumer. We'd get laughed out of the room if we made a presentation to anyone saying that you need to invest in a company like that. I think the problem on digital really for us is we're at a pretty crucial point right now. We need to analyze whether we're going into a land grab scenario and saying let's just get people on board, forget about the fact that they're not valuing content or paying for it. Once they form the habit, they will pay. But I think we've realized over the past, and I mean not, not the very distant past, that the clicks and eyeballs philosophy, and let's build value on clicks and eyeballs, let's build value on discounts when it comes to you know, the websites and, and the various uh, trade platforms that we have today, where we are a very value conscious nation. And it's very hard to imagine that just because you think you've created a habit for someone to watch something for free, they're gonna come on board and start paying for it once you start charging for it. So I think it's a pretty crucial time. It's important for us to figure out exactly how we believe that this model can be a model where we actually increase the pool. We increase the advertising pool, we increase the consumption pool, we don't decimate the old media models in order to create something new that is bright and shiny but doesn't really pay off at the end of it. You know, you may not want to decimate it, but it's being decimated despite you wanting to protect it. The fact is that you require a lot of faith in this habit-forming behavior 
to the extent that you know you can't afford to be an atheist anymore. So you know, I, I think that's that's the challenge on how much of that habit forming can convert to more being able to monetize it. Um, Vikram, at NDTV, you pioneered a digital launch uh, at the turn of the century in many ways. What have been the learnings so far for NDTV.com? Um, while, as we were discussing earlier, measurability has improved, uh, has the uh, monetizing ability for you improved as well? Um, how do you compare NDTV.com with NDTV broadcast? Well, yeah, you know, the, <laughs> we, we, we've been doing it now for a very long period of time. As you said, it was 1999 that we started doing things like streaming video on the internet or giving content on mobile phones, uh, which was somewhat unusual at that time. Now, over a period of time, what we've really started to find is that a couple of key learnings. One, it is possible to monetize. Our revenues have been growing 50% year on year for the last five, six years, uh, or if not more. It's possible to make money, to be profitable. Our EBITDAs actually in our digital business are higher than they are for the television business, which is again somewhat unusual. It's also very important to get correct the, the mindset with which you are approaching the digital business. Uh, I think lots of old media houses have traditionally made a slight mistake in saying, this is the content that we are generating in print, this is the content that we are generating on television or movies or whatever they are. We're going to take that and we're going to put that online and somehow it's going to work. That I don't think always is necessary. It can happen, but it's not always necessarily the case. So our approach has been from the day one to say this is a separate entity, it's a separate beast. We incorporated it separately 10 years ago and we allow the teams there to do what is correct from the internet's point of view because the content that will work, the way it should be purposed, what the user experience is, what will work, what will not work, will be different to what works and what doesn't work on television or on print or on something else. And I think that's really been in many ways the keys, keys to success. Um, also from our point of view, we find that it is actually easier to measure sometimes the audience that you've got on digital. Now if you're getting, as we did, we, we get something like 65 to 70 million unique visitors a month on digital. Now on digital, we can tell you who those people are, we can tell you their IPs, we can tell you the device they're watching it on, their names, their addresses, what they ate for breakfast, you know what I mean, you know, you can, you can get a sense of it. Um, in TV, to some extent, it's an extrapolation from a pitifully small sample size of 12,000 people in a country of 1.3 billion. So there is going to be that gap which has to be addressed and it has to be addressed by the whole industry at some point. Thanks. I'm going to come back with a couple of more thoughts for you and Mr. Puri because both of you are in broadcast uh, of, of the channels. But, you know, it's very fascinating, this panel, if you look at it, because on my immediate left, Mr. Puri, India Today started 40 years ago. At that time, people didn't even know something like internet could exist. Uh, and on the far end is uh, Neeraj, who was born digital. So Hangama was born digital. Um, give us a sense of, you know, you are, you, you are a digital animal in many ways. What are you doing now which is different from what you were doing earlier? Has Hangama itself changed? Do you see further changes for you or you think you're in a sweet spot now and you really don't have to worry like the rest on the panel? Um, yeah, hi, good afternoon all of you and thanks Pranjal for that uh, <laughs> uh, introduction. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm to some extent sort of reminded of 2002 when the first digital panel at Fiki Frames was, uh, you know, uh, it was in one of the smaller rooms that um, I got a bunch of my friends from, at that time it used to be Orange, et cetera, and we started this conversation. Uh, it's taken 14 years for this broader theme uh, of being one session over a three-day be uh, to effectively now becoming uh, an entire theme for a session itself. Uh, my, uh, in some ways, it almost reminds me of a term which a lot of us have used and more often than used, perhaps abused, uh, which is convergence. Uh, and, and in some ways, parts of these conversations have remained pretty much the same. Uh, the aspect of the elusive uh, revenue model associated with it, et cetera, which two of our panelists, I think both uh, Sid and Vikram referenced. Uh, I look at it like this, that uh, you know, there are three key things out here. There is no doubt that consumption is happening. And there is very little that we did, including telecom networks did, to enable that. The fact is, four years back, we sold 12 million smartphones. This year, we'll spell, sell 150 million. That's a 1,200% growth. 
Four years back, we used to say, what if there was a phone for 10,000 rupees that would really break the market? The fact is there are two and a half thousand rupee, you know, smartphones that are there in the market. And we are today at the cusp of a genuine transition because 3G really did little for us. You know, it's really a transition from 2G to LTE, which you are likely to see and witness. Uh, so on the back of that, there is tremendous amount of consumption that's happening. We ourselves in our own small way, last month served about 65 million consumers who accessed us and 17 million of those ended up transacting with us, which means that they bought something from us building on an ecosystem which is purely dependent on what we call as the microtransaction economy. And I think it's the responsibility of each of us in three areas.